Hey good people, Batavia here. I have a front and backyard fall garden tour for you. All right, so before we get started, I am going to ask if you haven't already to please subscribe to the channel. I am going to continue to share more garden joy, no matter the season, fall, winter, spring, and summer. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get started with the fall tour in the front yard and the flower bed that sits street side. I am so excited. My hibiscus have finally produced multiple blooms. The first one here that sits front and center is a holy grail hibiscus. And look at those big flower faces. It's so pretty. And then over on the other side, this hibiscus started to bloom later in the season. Uh, it's an annual, but it still has produced such pretty flowers. And I have one more tucked away over here in the corner. This is a perennial, so it will come back next year. The Holy Grail is also a perennial. One more annual hibiscus. If you see a theme here, I'm a fan of the hibiscus. One more perennial. Most of everything else in the bed is perennial and that's very intentional. My poor sunflowers have um, seen better days. I'll pull all of the um, baskets out for the season, the actual frame stays in the ground. Um, and then I'll cut back some of these flowers, um, like this one. And then there's the blanket flower over there that uh, did pretty good most of the summer, but it's petered out here. But my maintenance for this bed, even with the new additions, I still anticipate it to be pretty low. The prep that I'll do at the end of the fall and the uh, in preparation for next spring to make my job a little bit easier. It's the first week of October. Fall has arrived and we have bed number one in the front yard garden. We have a couple of jalapeno plants that are still uh, producing some good peppers. I may just have enough to do something fun with. And then this zucchini plant that's taken over everything is still producing zucchini, even zucchini flowers. So there's one there. There's a larger one that I'll come back and harvest. Um, I do have some kale tucked away in here that in hindsight, I wouldn't have planted here. Um, I have some netting on it to try to protect it from some of the um, bugs that get to it, but it doesn't look great. It may do better once I pull the rest of this stuff out. And the next section, the orange cello that I got from the nursery when they were like giving them away mid-season. So it's produced a, a handful, maybe a couple of dozen tomatoes. Ones like this I'll toss. Um, and I have seen the squirrels or the remnants of what the squirrels have eaten on the porch for this one. So uh, Ford Giant, I think it's Ford Giant Shard. This is actually grown all season. It has a much milder taste than most shard does. That's it, no trouble with the heat or a bug. So I think when lettuce doesn't grow in the summer, I'll use this as my leafy green. Marigolds are continuing to bloom and will continue to do so until the cold weather hits them. I have a little bit of dead heading that I should get to. I'm kind of at the point in the season where I'm letting the garden run wild, as my grandmother would say. These are what's left of the royal purple beans. There are a couple of beans here that have probably gotten a bit old. Um, 
but they're not producing any more flowers. I don't expect any more beans from this plant. And that lettuce that I planted in June, poor thing. This is clearly not the place for this variety of lettuce, so I'll make a note of that for next year. Um, I have probably two or three carrots, and I'm still excited. I'm hoping that there are some carrots underneath that soil. Um, I've not been able to successfully grow carrots from seed these last couple of seasons, so I'm hoping that this is the one, this is the time. And then my snap peas. I planted those, I believe, at the beginning of August, and um, they haven't done great. You can see some of the pods there. And at the edge of the bed, we still have okra um, that is continuing to produce. And then a lot of the leaves on the trellis for this bed. Um, cucumbers and beans they've started to turn brown but there are a couple of cucumbers that are still there we'll see it when we go on the inside and that is bed number one so bed number two uh, similar it's starting to peter out but there's still some food on here I think I let this eggplant go too long just based on the um, firmness of it. And it's been raining, so you can't see it. But when I looked yesterday, it's still the color of it. The sheen is pretty dull. And that's a sign where it has reached or passed its uh, point of return. I'll take it inside and cut it and see what it looks like. But I think that I'm gonna need to toss that. So. From this plant, we'll also have a couple of zucchini, it looks like. There's one there. You can see the flower at the end of it. There's another there. So the beans have, I think, reached their final day. There are no more flowers on the beans, so they're not gonna produce any more. And some of these beans have gotten a little bit too old to eat. Um, I could always save the bean that's inside, let that dry out and save the bean that's inside and replant those next year. But I think I have a plenty of seeds or bean seeds from uh, my package still. So this is another section of shard. This is ruby red. And the bugs have uh, been gnawing away at this all summer um, so in the back I have it covered which provides it a little bit more protection um, but it's not fair that well up here so that's a note for next year deal seeds that I dropped a bit ago it's springing up and same thing with the snap peas in this bed they don't look that great I don't know if I planted them too early and it was still too hot in August and September or not but um, we'll give those a try next spring and see what happens. So I've let this lettuce go. Um, I wanna see what it looks like when it goes to seed. This is what it basically bolts up. And at that point, you're not going to eat the lettuce anymore. And then there are little flowers that appear. And then this is where you can actually get the uh, lettuce seeds if you want to just replant them. Uh, so I wanna see what this is gonna do and if I can grab some seeds from this. And similar to bed one, we still have some okra. I'm gonna see, I'm gonna actually cook some this weekend to see if it's still um, edible. It's getting pretty large here. Um, still some okra flowers that are there. So inside the trellis, uh, the arch here, you still have, I had cucumbers and um, beans planted on either side of it, string beans. Some of these beans, uh, like this, has turned brown. I'll let these dry on the vine, probably, and then take the bean inside, and you can just basically save that until next season and replant it. But I do still have a couple of cucumbers here. This is the Boston Pickling Cucumber. The Japanese variety that I planted. Some of these are still growing pr to be pretty sizable. Um, I'll take these off the vine 
and probably make a tomato cucumber salad with some of them. About 50% of this front yard, these front yard beds seem to be more or less decorative. And about 50% are still producing food. And that's okay for year one, I think. Oh, I did wanna quickly show you from bed two, a tomato plant that, I think this is the pineapple orange that I planted. While they may not have a chance to get ripe, I'm gonna let them stay on the vine until they uh, until the frost comes, just before the frost comes, and I'll pull those off and let those ripen on the counter. So beds three and four, the leaves are starting to die. This is um, cucumbers and more okra plants that are in here, but I still have some cucumbers that are on the vine. So there are a couple down there. There's a cucumber there. So even though the leaves and the plant look sickly, in a lot of cases, cucumbers will still be produced and grow. Um, okra, same story as in the first two beds. We'll take a couple of, of the larger okra from these plants and see if they're still edible. Um, because they may have reached their prime and we may be past that at this point. But we'll see. Still plenty of them on the uh, on the plants. That is bed three and four. So a quick pan around. We've moved to the backyard garden. Quick view of what that looks like. Beds five, cage baby bed six. And bed seven over there, uh, bed eight and nine, and in the far corner, bed 10 and 11. And we'll take you through what each of these beds look like. So for bed five and um, these beds, it's just, it rained all of yesterday. Um, so everything is pretty soaked, um, but all in all, the leafy green bed still has leafy greens. Kale is still killing it. <laughs> it looks great. The dinosaur kale, lacinato kale, it has had some bug damage. I think those are aphids. Um, about a good rinse and that'll be fine. It didn't have the growth that I really wanted but I think it's because things like this, which is the Russian kale, and then the traditional curly kale, I think over the season it um, shadowed out things like the lacinato kale, the dinosaur kale. So I didn't get enough sunlight, didn't have enough room to grow, and it's the result of that is just smaller leaves, smaller plants. Um, so that's a note in my garden notes for next season. Just think about spacing a bit more. Um, the Russian kale, this one's just always, you know, these are big, bold leaves and the bigger leaves I use during the season for things like wraps. Um, this would make for good, uh, smoothies as well. Good salads as well, cause it's, they're a little bit more tender as far as the leaf. I have a bunch of the curly kale planted and tucked in in different places here. So some plants were planted earlier, other plants were planted later. So. That also accounts for the difference in size for these plants. But the great thing about this curly kill in particular is I plan on putting plastic over this kind of hoop, this contraption here. I had netting over it during the summer and the goal with the netting was to protect it against the cabbage moth, the white cabbage moth. Um, so to protect all of the leafy greens from it, which it overall served its purpose. Uh, but the hoop itself, I'll leave in place and uh, probably put plastic over it. I'll pull out anything that I don't think is going to survive the cold weather and then leave things like the curly kale. And I can continue to come, you know, through November. I expect the frost to come in October. So through November, and even December. I've not done it myself, but I've read online and seen a lot of videos of people um, that are able to maintain uh, leafy greens like this throughout the season, the winter season, I should say. So we'll see. I'm going to give it a try. It would be nice to have 
fresh, if you will, uh, greens as the weather gets colder. So that is bed number five. Before we move on to the next bed, this is the cherry tomato plant. This is the one cherry 100, I think. I bought the tomato plants and all of my tomato plants this year from garden centers and nurseries. This one just went wild. I didn't do any real efforts to try to tame it. And um, I've been splitting the tomatoes with the squirrels on this one. Some of these have rotten on a vine. It was hard to keep up with all the cherry tomatoes it produced. So it's definitely, it's a flavorful cherry tomato and it produces a lot if you're interested in growing a cherry tomato next year. Um, I'll zoom in on the tag down here. I got this from Menards um, in their garden center earlier this spring. So inside of the cage, baby will go. Um, these five plants we have in here, starting from the left, we have a brandywine tomato plant, which has done very well this season. Um, it has produced quite a few tomatoes. Uh, this one's pretty cool. You can see on this vine, there is, the tomatoes are at kind of three different states of being ripe. Here is where you can see that there's that green that's turning into that blush pink. Um, and this one probably is gonna need another week before it really is ripe. Next plant is the orange ox heart. This one's been resilient. I did a tomato tasting and there's a video on the channel for that. This one had a really mild flavor. Um, not necessarily my favorite, but um, we're gonna have to consider how well it produced tomatoes this season. Uh, Next up is the big boy, a bunch of ripe tomatoes on here. So although it's wet out here today, and I hate to do it when it's wet, I'm gonna get in here and pull these tomatoes, the ripe ones from the plant. There are a bunch of them in here too, so it's time. Um, I'll still have plenty, it looks like, that are green that may not have time before the weather turns uh, to freezing to ripen. But um, again, the process with tomatoes, once they get to that size that we're looking at them here, I'll be able to take these off of the plant, leave them on the counter or on the windowsill, and they'll continue to ripen. So this is the first week of um, October. So even if we see frost towards the end of October, which was, I'm hoping for, like maybe it's even warm until November, but we'll see. But even if I get frost um, at the end of October, these green tomatoes, they may take still a couple of weeks to ripen, which means that I will still have fresh tomatoes um, into November from the garden, which it's pretty cool. So in between the cage baby and bed number seven is one more cherry tomato plant that this is actually supposed to be the walkway in between the two beds but these last couple of years I've planted inside of it and this has just gotten out of control. I need to figure out how to pin this up. There's still so many tomatoes on here. I'm actually going to look into um, dehydrating to see if I can dehydrate these tomatoes similar to um, how we dehydrated the uh, cayenne peppers to make those red pepper flakes. Um, but I've seen a, I guess a recipe if you will, on dehydrating them. Um, Cause I'm not gonna be able to eat this many cherry tomatoes between this plant and the other. So we moved on to bed number seven. This is the pepper bed. Um, I have, starting on the left, there's a sweet bell pepper in the back, the only one that survived this season. And I think I've harvested, I think there's only one more pepper left on this bed, um, excuse me, on this uh, pepper plant. We have jalapenos. There is the garden salsa pepper plant. Uh, this is what's left of the banana pepper plant. There is one pepper left on here. I pulled a couple off uh, earlier this week. On the end here, we still have the cayenne peppers that are being produced. Most of them are have turned red. Um, next to it, serrano peppers, which did pretty well this season. Um, 
putting the smaller peppers there. And then the star of the pepper bed has been the poblano pepper plant. Um, I actually have a video with a dish I prepared using those that I'll be sharing. Um, so. so moving on to bed number eight. This is the predominantly the collard green bed. Um, so I've already harvested and cooked a pot of collards. Um, and these leaves have just grown back like gangbusters um, underneath these huge collard green leaves. And I've used in the past, not from my garden, but where I've got from the store, like leaves like this, this size, can easily be used for wraps, which is pretty cool. Um, so here is the second to last. I planted four cabbage, so this is the second to last one. There's one actually in the leafy green but this one seems to be doing pretty well. Uh, this is one of the older, longer varieties. Um, so we'll leave that in the ground a little bit longer and then harvest that probably in the next couple of weeks. Um, but all in all, bed number eight is doing pretty well. All right, so bed number nine. So I reserve this bed all season long for my fall planting. Um, and I've planted seeds two separate times and nothing has germinated in this bed. I saw like a couple of seedlings um, back last month, but they've died back or been eaten away. Um, and it's unfortunate. I'm not exactly sure what happened here. Um, I had this wire over it to prevent the squirrels from digging into it. Um, it worked in most cases, not so much over there. Um, but I guess it doesn't matter much since uh, there's nothing growing here. So some of my thoughts are, while this dirt is the same as the dirt that's in the bed next to it, um, and it's the same dirt that's in the front yard beds, this dirt sat much longer than the beds in the front yard. So I'm thinking maybe the dirt was too compacted for those seeds to germinate. Um, I did grow stuff from seed in the front yard beds, but I did that much closer to the time that those beds, the dirt was put in the beds. And this sat all of uh, most of June, July, and August, and I didn't start putting seeds in until some point in August and then again in September. So I don't know if it's that, um, as you can clearly see, are these seedlings, these three plants were seedlings that I planted and they've grown. Um, so I don't know what the deal is here, but I have some time to try to figure out how I want to approach this next year. And it could even be supplementing the dirt in this bed, pulling some of the dirt out, putting some different soil in here. Um, but it is a little disappointing, but I'm going to just be thankful for all the other uh, veggies that I've grown and just troubleshoot this a bit and see if I can come up with a solution. So that is bed number nine. All right, we made it to bed number 10 and we'll be rounding out the backyard in just a couple. Uh, so for bed number 10, I have this new makeshift fencing that I put together with chicken wire. Um, and this was to prevent critters from um, crawling in here and digging the bed up and it's been successful so far. Um, but I have strawberries that I dropped. Um, these were starter plants that I purchased. And um, the last bed is actually the strawberry bed but I ran out of room in it I thought and so I just put these here. They're perennial, they'll come back year over year. The lettuce here, I don't remember the variety of the lettuce now and I can't see the marker so but this is a different uh, variety which I dropped the lettuce seeds um, the last week of August uh, so it's the first week of October so that's about six weeks or so and then that is another set of lettuce here and here I've been using the cut and come again method which you know you're just taking the older leaves off um, and you can actually just pinch those off and taking them you know off several plants and you can just go ahead and make yourself a salad. There's a video coming out on that as well. Um, here's the emerald oak. I do remember this one. This is the first time I've grown it. Um, and then the uh, beets that I planted. Again, all of the beets and the lettuce were planted the last week of August. 
um, and then the mint that just keeps on giving. So I'm gonna have a lot of mint to dry. So this is where this open section. I've been waiting and waiting to plant my radishes because it's just still, September was still so warm for us and they like the cooler temp. So I'm going to commit to dropping those seeds this weekend and I think I still have enough time in the season for them to produce. They're at the smallest amount of time, like 21 days, maybe up to 30 days. So we'll see, wish me luck on that. But that is bed number 10. So bed number 11 is the strawberry bed. Uh, this bed existed, um, I built this last year, but I planted the strawberries all new as strawberry starter plants this year. And I've been able to harvest uh, strawberries off of it. Um, so I'm looking forward to seeing what it produces next year if I get larger strawberries. All of these flowers that you see will ultimately turn into a strawberry if there's enough time and the weather allows it. Um, strawberries are perennial, so they will return next year. Um, so all in all, I'm pleased with this bed. That is bed number 11.